Hello, hello. Hey. Hello. All right. Oh, what uh what what is your well, okay, I guess it's X606, right? Mhm. Mm okay. And what are your pronouns? Uh she her. Okay. All righty. Okay. Okay, so yeah. give me the take. And, what what yeah. is what is your belief system, and why do you believe it? As I understand, I know the memes, but I don't know the facts. So maybe it's all memes. Okay. I don't know. Well, okay, so I'm not super like attached to it. It's it's just like um, I guess antinatalism is just a like a I guess a philosophical belief that assigns a negative value to birth rates. Okay. Uh, so it's kind of like a. I, I guess, like, actually, it's more of like just like I guess a like a philosophical position, right? Okay. And not really a political position or anything, but uh, I. So the argument is that, like. Is it basically that he, that life is suffering and therefore birth is bad, because you're imposing something uh, on you're imposing like suffering on a being that otherwise wouldn't exist. Uh, kinda, it's like um. Okay, so it, like uh, there's on the Wikipedia page where there's this like chart thing mm -hmm. where, uh, so like if okay, so they they set up like a chart right where with two columns and then one is like scenario A and scenario B. So in scenario A, uh, something exists, mm -hmm. and in scenario B, you don't exist. Mm -hmm. So in in the scenario A, uh, like there is pain right uh, like you, you you feel both like pain and pleasure when you live mm -hmm. so feeling pain it, that's a bad thing obviously and then feeling pleasure is a good thing but then in the scenario b uh there's there's no pain right so that's a good thing and then the ab absence of, like not feeling pleasure it's a necessarily like a like it's not a necessarily a bad thing it's just like a neutral thing so the argument is that like there, there's an asymmetric thing there where like the not having the presence of um pain is a like a, a good thing morally i guess or like a yeah and then like having like the absence of pleasure isn't necessarily like I don't know. It, it's that's so the argument I've looking been at this. It seems like it's pretty solidly rooted in in de, in, in like deontological philosophy because it's it's a it, in this chart uh, at least there's there's duties fulfilled or violated, duty violated, it, duty filled. Like that's that's pretty strong. Uh, oh oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? no, there are like lots of different uh, arguments for it, right? And okay. this is just. Uh, the one I was like talking about is the asymmetric asymmetry asymmetry between pleasure and pain, which is a bit. Don't you feel like, though that like that like uh, it's a little bit it is a little bit reductive to 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 put plain, pain and pleasure on a strictly um, like binary right? Because there are some pains mm -hmm. that can become pleasures. For example, exercising is painful, but it can also be very pleasurable at the exact same time. So it seems mm -hmm. to me like pain and pleasure can't be easily, um, easily split. Um, so, so sim so simply, right? Yeah. I, what about yeah, people who like, get pleasure from pain? Well, I mean, that would just count as pleasure then, I guess. So wait a second. Not... Here's a, here's a suggestion. What mm -hmm. would it not be given that there are people being born all the time and it is a good that there are like I think we can ar we can argue that it is a it is at least to some degree a good thing that people can exist like w with without any regard to pain or pleasure people existing is a is a, is at least a morally neutral thing right so if that's the mm -hmm. case then a the true enlightened position the real galaxy brain position is that we should seek a world in which all people are genetically wired to feel all pleasure as pain or i mean all pain as pleasure that way people get the benefits of pleasure and the benefits of existing in addition to no downsides of pain that would be the true morally enlightened position so we should basically mm -hmm. genetically engineer a bunch of uh babies that are that are going to be predestined to become um be, to become uh, like bdsm freaks in the future well i i guess that depends on like if you think uh what is it there's like a moral i, I think there's like a more oh like a philosophy there's like a machine or something called that in philosophy is that I, I don't know yeah 
I I'm not super but I think and like there are arguments where like is that really what we want to do as humans but mm. hmm. I mean it seems it seems interesting to me um it seems that like the the if if you make a binary between pleasure and pain with pain being bad and pleasure being good mm -hmm. then the goal would be to maximize pleasure at all costs because that's the ultimate good would be to live a life without pain this would remove the need for antinatalism and instead would allow for uh endless thriving under the yeah. system yeah i guess i i guess i'm not super like i'm not like a hardcore Chemical and, and, bliss. Uh, uh yeah that sounds although it i i used to think that would be a good thing but i, I don't know if it is like mm -hmm. it seems kind of like maybe i don't know hmm. uh, i yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I just think there are some, like, interesting arguments about it. I, I, I wouldn't say that, like... And I definitely wouldn't, like, apply it to politics or something. That yeah, would be, like, It seems politically insane. very dangerous, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um... But, yeah, interesting. So, I, I, I think... I think that we've... I think that we... I think there's a problem, perhaps, in, in strictly uh, making a dichotomy. Um... Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Kids biting themselves without feeling it. Yeah, but but Ada Stardust, this wouldn't be removing all pain. It would be transferring pain into pleasure. So it wouldn't really matter if uh, at that point with this dichotomy, with pleasure being good and pain being bad, the solution would be to make people only feel pleasure, a.k.a. the chemical bliss type type uh thing and basically it wouldn't really matter if they were eating themselves because they would be enjoying it they could literally be chewing off their own arm and they would be enjoying it and yeah, that would be a see. good thing because they wouldn't be suffering because of that they would only be experiencing pleasure yeah i, I guess they could literally self-immolate and mm -hmm. would be just like oh my god like they would be aha gal facing while burning themselves on fire hmm yeah I, that's uh <laughs> Not sure if that's well. I we've I reached guess... the Guru. We've reached the Guru universe. I, I guess my real position on this is that I think like um, that it's like morally neut. If humanity ended tomorrow, if like uh, if basically people stopped having children, then that's a morally neutral thing. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Not creating more lives is a more which is like it's not really antinatalism. It's just like a. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't I think people have any obligation to have children, but I also think that a lot of people have a desire to have progeny and in one mm. form or another, um, right, which is sort of a part of the uh, biological, uh, you know, hand that we were dealt. And I don't think it's a completely irrational urge, right? Um, mm -hmm. Like whether whether literal children via genetics to perpetuate genetics or um, adopted children via perpetuating a social model that you think could be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> hey. Antinatalism kind of seems like an argument for a universe that doesn't exist. Is my is my my concern? Well, well that's why I kind of thought well, it was like a meme thing. But I guess a lot of people. Um, well, not it's, it's not it's not really like a universe that is. It's that because a universe doesn't necessarily have any actors in it, right? Like if there's no like moral agents, then there or I guess. Well, wait. Like, maybe maybe the ideal universe would be one in which there is one agent that prevents all other life from starting. Because here's the thing: if you if you leave the universe, if all humans are gone, then nobody can be around to make sure that life doesn't just start again. You're shirking your responsibility to reduce suffering. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you must. So the goal is to kill. No, sorry. Uh, the goal then in this ideal universe would be to uh, winnow life down until there is only one person remaining, a, an immortal being who only feels pleasure or pain. It doesn't, wouldn't really matter. They just need to make sure that life. They need to go around and step on on like they need to go and step on like uh, on like lizards that are crawling out of the primordial soup, um, in order to um, you know, in order to make sure that yeah. life never progresses back to the point where it can suffer again. Hmm. Yeah, that's a. <laughs> Not sure if that's a good world, but I, I'm in. I, I guess it would be. Yeah. I think it. I think of Dark Uadu the Watcher. <laughs> this is totally Evangelion. Yeah, it is a little bit like Evangelion, isn't it? 
Interesting. Hmm. Well, thank you. You've given me something to talk about. I'm going to hear mm -hmm. the cases of other antinatalists and we'll see. Um, mm -hmm. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Thank you for coming on X606. I oh, appreciate mm -hmm. it. Hello? Still there? Oop. I think I lost you. Hello, Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton. Oh, hello. Sorry, the stream was muted. Hello, that's all right. G'day, how you doing? Hey, how are you? Uh, pronouns? Um, um, he, him, but I, like, I'm not fussed at all. Okay. Um, not very good. Um, I have <laughs> had a bit of a bad day. Um, we had sorry? to put my dad's cat down, so Oof, I... I'm sorry about that. I'm pretty emotional, but hey, um, I've got some comfort food. Um, I'm enjoying the stream, so yeah. Excellent. Uh, yeah. Compromises. Yes. Well, hopefully anyway. this conversation will serve as a uh, worthy distraction. If nothing else, it perhaps will be entertaining. So give me your on well, I hope so. It's great to speak to you. Yeah. Yeah. Likewise. Thanks for coming and, on. Uh, no, that's all right. Very big thank you to Adam Flores in chat for my green name. Love to continue the white name genocide. Yes, indeed. In chat. I hope you're all enjoying now, this. Now, that is one um... type of antinatalism I can get behind. Let us, <laughs> let, us, let us ensure that never a white name indeed. creates ever again. <laughs> Purge all white names. Exactly. All right. Now, I have a bit of a different stance to X606. Okay. My position is... Uh, uh, based much less on philosophy and much more on practicality. Okay. Now, let me first preface my position by saying it's very open to change. My position is based on from where we are now as a civilization. Okay. So from where we sit, um, <laughs> our species is, uh, has their foot flat on the accelerator, hurtling towards uh, um, disaster, ecological collapse, mm -hmm. climate collapse, and we are not taking any steps to meaningfully address these global issues. Well, it depends on what you define as steps, though, right? Well, like, we, we're we not taking um, meaningful steps globally to shift towards green energy. Um, we're really not taking steps to address the rise in far-right fascist ideology. Um, we're going to be seeing over the next few decades some things are going to get bad i mean if we don't do anything about the fire ideology and climate change then that could morph into eco-fascism true so that's going to be a fun thing to deal with so really that's what my position is based upon i believe it's immoral to have kids at this point in time mm -hmm. now like i said that's open to change if we as a civilization as a species take meaningful steps to address these problems then my position will change like that hmm but right now, since our planet is slow, like the fire on our planet is spreading, until we start to actually take steps to address those issues, then it's immoral to bring children into that world. If we're not uh, taking steps uh, to address climate change, well, not even to address climate change, because at this stage, it's already coming. We can only weather the storm better. We can only prepare right. to, to you know, ride out the storm yeah, so unless I mean, we actually take steps to address these global issues, then like that's what my position is dependent upon. Okay. If we're not going to take steps to address these issues, then it's immoral to bring children into that world that they will inherit, and then you know, by that stage be too late, and they'll suffer the consequences of our inaction. Hmm. So, okay, I have a few questions about this. So first of all, uh, the immediate thing that comes to mind is that this position would require you to be quite sure on the outcome of the world and while i do tend to agree that we are hurtling towards ecological disaster i don't believe that i know all of the potential solutions and uh i think that there have been a lot of points in human history where people thought that had reason good you know reasonable position in thinking that the world was on the verge of collapse or destruction i mean that basically would describe the entirety of the Cold War period, where people were quite sure that a nuke would go off and in in and initiate a, a global, uh, what was it? I can't remember what it was called, a, a immolation effect where the fucking nuke would go up and then it would, as far as th there was there was a lot of reasonable concerns that the nuke would continue to spread, that p more powerful nukes would not be contained to a single explosion, they could ignite the entire atmosphere and kill everyone. 
um, or nuclear winter or something along those lines. So I'm glad I didn't. Think of that. Yeah, I agree as well. But surely you acknowledge that, like, if if we're going to advocate something such as like no longer having children because the world is doomed, you should probably be quite sure that the world is doomed, right? Like that seems like a pretty major conclusion to come to, and it would and it hinges very heavily on on a reasonable like a, a more than reasonable belief that the world is actually doomed and i don't mm. know if we I'm can com- make that declaration like i do i am somewhat pessimistic when it comes to um you know climate solutions but that doesn't mean that i don't think there isn't a solution in fact i'm hoping there's many solutions we haven't yet thought of um oh, no, my, my position is not one where i advocate for refusing to have children mine's more of um, we should be addressing these issues. That's the primary advocacy, right? Like the actual addressing these issues that people can have children. Hmm. However, if we're not going to, then it's immoral to bring children into that world. One where we refuse to address uh, these issues, because like I, I would love to have kids. I really want that. Uh-huh. However, my decision is really dependent on what happens in the next five to ten years. Hmm. In that time, if we haven't taken meaningful steps to address climate change then I personally will be more inclined to make the decision where like, I'm going to refuse to have children. I mean, there's plenty of kids already out there in the world. Yeah. If I want children, I can adopt them. That's fair. Um, so, I mean, I'm I mean, a like, huge that's... supporter of adoption personally. I had, uh, you know, two of the kids, two, two of my siblings were adopted and that was, mm. you know, really a meaningful experience of my life um and know, really like if you can afford to do it then you should do it anyway yeah i mean honestly most people can uh if you have as long if you have a house uh most people will be able to afford adoption because you actually get paid but most states will pay you uh a stipend to adopt children um well, there you go yeah most people don't know that but yes you actually can um it's a long so I guess... and obnoxious process but yeah yeah. Well, yeah, I've just seen Depresso Tranzo in the chat has just said, make conservatives anti-natalists. I mean, technically conservatives are the anti-natalists because they're the ones that refuse to um, address climate change. Yeah. I mean, I, now, I do think that, I mean, conservatism is, a, is a, in my opinion, a, a doomed, a, a, an ideology of doom, even if they don't acknowledge yes, it. Absolutely. Um, but a lot of, but a lot of that is because they don't believe that it's going to happen. They don't really believe it's going to happen. Um but like i said my position is very much dependent on how our species how our civilization goes in the next few years yeah i i i can see that position um though uh, like uh i don't know if i would i don't know that i would i don't know that I, well maybe i don't know enough about antinatalism maybe that is a form of antinatalism to me that's more like uh, a much more minor position or like a personal position when i under well but maybe this is a form maybe that is a a valid like a valid form of antinatalism and i can i think i can understand the idea that like uh feeling a a huge amount of of um of uh reluctance to um like intentionally bring a child into the world that you think is is going to get much 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 worse um and i think i think that's a, a a it is a bit, I will say, it is a little bit pessimistic, but I can understand that position to a certain degree. Um, mm. I guess my only is, thing would be that it is, it is that hinges on coming to the conclusion about how doomed the world is. And I think that's a really hard calculation to do because for all we know, who knows, like, what, what, like, I mean, I mean yeah. What, have you, if you watched the um, conversation that Vosh had with a um, climate scientist? Uh, yeah, I have. Yeah, the one with the, that, that was the one, actually, I remember when i watched that because i was playing uh death stranding at the time i think that was the one with the um with the um the 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 the, the localized nuclear winter discussion right i think that was the one i mean you could you could probably tell from my voice where i'm calling in from so it's in my best interest to avoid getting to that point right yeah i really do, yeah yeah um when the guy was talking about dropping a bomb to create a mini nuclear winter, before he even said the country, I knew it was going to be Australia. Yeah. <laughs> we've got a huge blank space in the middle oh, of our country. Oh, people have volunteered people various live. American states, by the way. There's a bunch of square <laughs> states that people have, have, like, sort of volunteered as the potential area. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's all right. It might if, if, you, if you're willing to take it off our hands, then please be my guest. I mean, we might not have but a again, choice, to be completely honest. Like, yeah. again, I don't want it to get to that point. If anything, I'm a pro-natalist because I yeah. want us to take meaningful steps to avoid that uh, 
consequence so that we can bring children safely into this world yeah i mean uh, i i would advocate for that part of it more than the antinatalist part i think um hmm. yeah so I mean, like well, yeah like exactly i'm like i'm not out here like you shouldn't have kids you know i'm out here I think that's unfair in real life. I think this is a pretty good faith. Like, re like it is a limited antinatalism. I never said that only radical, like, hardcore extremist <laughs> antinatalists could come on. Yeah, interesting. So, I don't know. I, I think that makes sense. Huh. I, I think there's certain certain parts of that that I think are plausible. Um, and perhaps the mistake is is over memifying the most ridiculous forms of, of antinatalism. I, 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 I worry <laughs> that, like, I mean... The thing is that I think that, well, I don't know. I guess a lot will depend on how things go. I, I think that with, um, I think that we, there's a lot of, um, how do I describe this? There is a lot of changes coming to the world and to society right now. And I mm. don't know how rapid and, and um, like, uh, and 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 sudden it's going to be and how drastic but i think that we're looking at it like i think people are I, I genuinely believe that when we get out of uh out of the covid and people get vaccinated that we're going to leave out into a world that's like fucking way different than the one that we walked in that we oh, came absolutely. into like i don't this, think the world's like, going to oh be the same God. at all like and i don't this has even... been like the most existential crisis since 9 11 and this is on a much larger scale way bigger and it's not like, even and it's we totally saw different. how radically we saw how radical 9-11 changed the global north, the developed world, yeah. and like the global south by, you know, the fallout from the global north. This is on a whole other level. I have an uncle who lives in North Carolina, uh -huh. and at Christmas time, he was talking about like, oh yeah, three months time, vaccine comes out, we'll be all good. And he's, he's not an idiot, but this yeah. is just like, no offense, the American mindset. Right. Like three months, we're going to be looking at closer to three years. Like imagine vaccine rollout in Africa. Yeah. And the poor Asia countries. Like, well, and, and this idea that people have of like, oh, yeah, things will be fine by 2022. Yeah. I mean, I think we're going to be able to, re I think there's going to be some like resuming of a little bit of like, quote unquote, normal life. Like, but I, I don't think, I think people haven't realized yet. Like, like, especially Americans haven't, haven't like uh, internalized. And I haven't even, and I've taken this really seriously and been plugged into the news. Um, but like, there's, there's so many businesses have closed, so many restaurants have closed. Like the life that we lived before doesn't exist anymore. In addition to the fact that 500 plus thousand Americans are dead, like that is an economic sea change. It is just a total. I can't even like. It's like, impossible. Watching, yeah. Watching from across the way, like it's not even funny anymore, America. Like the joke has well and truly gotten old. Oh, trust me, I know. Like um, no one's laughing. I've I like this has been a traumatic event of unbelievable like, not, proportions and not I, to throw shade like oh sorry yeah no go ahead not to throw shade at americans but even the switched on americans like everyone in this chat mm -hmm. it really doesn't feel like people are taking it seriously like when vosh flew out to debate tim pool like I, I couldn't believe that he did that because i he's a smart guy i couldn't believe that he got on a plane in the middle of a pandemic yeah, I mean, like, I, I can't really, I, like, I, for me, I haven't like, like Tim Pool. Tim Pool is an absolute fuckface for not debating people virtually. Yeah. Like, fuck him. That was virtue signaling on his part, yeah. But like, yeah, like, and and like, obviously, like, you know, Vosh was safe and got home safe, fine. But like, the risk is even high, yeah. even like everyone in this chat who I know is smart. Like, guys, I feel like you've become a bit jaded from all the death that you can't fathom the difference like like when i was talking to my uncle at christmas time yeah and he was talking about how offhand he was just talking about coronavirus yeah i looked it up after i was done talking to him there was in north carolina five times the amount of active case there was actively five times more cases in north carolina yeah than have been in the entirety of australia right yeah, it's just ridiculous. active cases. Yeah. Like the entire case that Australia has had in North Carolina alone, active cases alone, five times the amount of total cases Australia has had. 
Yeah. It's 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 pretty depressing. And I, I do I like think please, chat just to please stay as safe as you can. Yeah. I know some people in chat are getting a little mad. There's some 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 fucking American hackles are being ruffled at the moment, uh or raised at the oh, moment. Like, like but, I said, this is no shade. Like I'm it's yeah, terrifying. It, this it's is been no horrible. like I mean part of the th part of the thing too is that like um a lot those american a lot of americans who have done like the right thing like i would argue that i'm in that position i haven't traveled i've barely left my house i've basically poured my entire life into what i'm doing right now hello imps that's right i my entire life has been basically devoted to this because i would <laughs> otherwise go crazy um so donate yeah uh, please donate and <laughs> like and subscribe <laughs> um but but yeah it's like um but it is it's 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 hard for me to even know like i don't know i don't know what the in i don't know what the interior of fucking seattle is going to be like afterwards because i haven't been there i don't even know what's open yeah. i don't know if half the places that i went to before are open i know that half the bars that i used to like to go to with my friends once in a while will never be open i, I mean, like we... like i don't know it's just it's totally fucked and and like like to tech to tech tech's credit from chat um we really haven't had much of a choice because it's been there's been no federal action it's just everyone's been left yeah. to themselves and it's it's actually totally i'm fucked. so sorry yeah like i'm so sorry everyone like yeah you don't like this is like none of you feel bad this is not your fault yeah not like none of you have done anything wrong it is it like, is your, your federal government has utterly failed you yeah, I mean, it, it has been a complete thing. I mean, I live in one of the states that has done, quote unquote, better. Like, I live in Washington, which is a state that we were the first place to get the coronavirus. We we're the first ones to act on it. We we're the first ones to declare an emergency. And even we have barely done enough because there's just mm. no support for it. And, like, first of all, like, my state has already been sanctioned by Donald Trump because of a political reasons. It's a really long That's story that I can't really get into. Like, he literally... um. Uh, yeah, I know he wants. I know he wants <laughs> don't, to don't worry, school. don't worry. I know. Like, yeah. I, I, like I follow American politics more closer than Australian politics. Yeah, Who well, say, I can kind of understand why we're, 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 we're the biggest American risk. Imperialism. <laughs> True, um, but yeah, it is. It is pretty fucked. Well, uh, I mean, like we, were, like we were already in a global democratic recession, and this is only stoking the fires of nationalism. So yeah, I mean, I don't know. Post, like, it's going to be. It's going to be been, interesting in a post-COVID world. Yeah, I, and I've been thinking about this too. Like, I, I if we ever get there, I, yeah, uh, hope we will. Uh, I know we have a new variant be... rotating around in here, but I don't know. Um, I mean, it I, might I just be like it. it's the new yeah. seasonal thing that we we just have to live with it. Uh, I really like maybe now from when you go outside, maybe you just perpetually have to wear a mask. Yeah, it, it is possible. I mean, I do think that a lot of people. Um, yeah, I do think a lot of people are, are going to find themselves doing that. I will say um, I will say that uh, my one thing that I think is, is becoming increasingly, like, uh, at least it seems to be gaining some evidence in my mind, is the idea that the U.S. might sort of, like, pull apart weirdly into these regional, uh, like, pseudo countries. Because, oh, um, because... I don't know. Well, is that a good idea though? I don't know, but I don't know if we have a I don't know if we have a choice in it. The the difference between a a between Washington, California, and Oregon and in the type yeah. of policies that are going forward right now, they're completely different than the rest of the country. Even neighboring states are just it's like you go from from like the the western states and you go into the the west coast and it's just like completely different culture totally different yeah. rules we we have we now are like three two out of the three states on the west coast have like total decriminalization of drugs it's like we it's a, like a different place completely yeah. and like there are states right now that are hammering forward with trying to ban functionally ban abortion trying to functionally ban a uh, transition for trans it's like i don't even know like i i can't even put together a pro like a a meaningful prediction because it's so unpredictable like it just makes me so worried at the thought of america breaking up when china and russia are only gaining more steam like how much firm of a foothold is far right ideology going to get if America breaks up? Because America, flawed as it is, yeah, like, as bad as imperialism is, it still is a bulwark against far right authoritarianism. We'll see. Like, I guess. As, like it's yeah. it's the best we've got. It's yeah. not good, but it's better than China and Russia. Yeah.
So like, like I haven't heard that theory before. So if that, it, I really I, hope that's I don't not know the way if it'll be going. official. I don't know if it'll ever even be spoken. But culturally, it definitely seems to be happening. Um, like oh, absolutely. Again, you you could. But hey, like let's wait until we get to a post scarcity far future paradise, and then America can break up. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might be right. Um, well, all right, Louis Vuitton, thank you so much for coming on. I'm going to bring someone else in to uh, get everybody their fair share of antinatalism takes. But thank you so <laughs> much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Do you, mind if I, do you mind if I shout out my socials? Please do. All right, listen up, you imps. My name is Louis Vuitton. As you know, I've been active in the community. And not that long ago, I started my own channel. Because, hey, if you've got the skills, this is what we need. Growing up, I didn't have a left wing left wing content creators to look up to but hey all of you have got us we've got demon mama we've got vasha we, we've got <laughs> xanderhole we've got denims we've got lots of people and you know what if you've got that skill then we need you too and hey true i decided to throw my hat in you can find me on youtube twitter and twitch under louis baton subscribe to my youtube channel and follow me on twitch I've been sick recently, so I haven't. Yes, I gay fish. I was on infrared. <laughs> um, I debated him for an hour and twenty minutes. It oh was an hour God. and twenty minutes. <laughs> you can. He, he actually uploaded the video. It's kind of painful. Um, you can go watch it. It's called "This Is Why Definitions Are Dumb," because it was an hour and twenty minutes on him gaslighting me, refusing to acknowledge a definition of fascism. Because if he acknowledged a definition of fascism, then he would have to admit that it meets that China and Russia meet that definition as well. Wow. Um, how long did you last? An hour and 20, uh, 20 minutes. B B R Y M 15. Brim. So I, I've been sick recently, so I haven't been streaming, but I'm going to start again tomorrow. I do prepared content on YouTube as well. So please follow me on YouTube. Follow me on Twitch. Do you mind if I post a link in the yeah, go for it. Uh, chat? Yeah. Thank you so much, Louis Baton. Uh, we're going to bring someone no, else thank in. Thank you for having me on. But yeah, thank you for coming on. Really appreciate it. And good luck. Get some followers Trans thriving. there. Trans thriving, indeed. All right, we got Big Lundy in here. Hey, the return of Big Lundy. Hello, uh, pronouns again? Sorry. He him. All right, Big Lundy, we speak again. Indeed. Oh, before we get started, can I go ahead and make another uh, big little shout out to Louis Vuitton over there? I don't know of his work, but you should probably subscribe to him anyway, because uh, Louis Vuitton is a hell of a good play on words. I just, you know, that's just some creativity right there. <laughs> I can appreciate that. Yeah, there you go. Well, all right. Give me your antinatalist take, Big Lundy. Right. So I am what I would refer to as a limited antinatalist. Um, in that I don't universalize this, um, but I do believe that it is reasonable to advocate to other people and to attempt to change people's minds depending on the context of which they live their lives. Mm -hmm. I think that if you cannot reasonably state that you have the ability to take care of a child, then it is your responsibility, morally speaking, to not. Okay. Um, so that's kind of my general uh, idea as far as my personal view on it is concerned. Okay. Um, now, I think that that is a much more defensible position than something that's universalized or something that's attempted to be put into policy to any particular degree. And I personally also wouldn't put this into policy either. Mm -hmm. um, in a similar sense that even if you are, for instance, uh, anti-abortion, I think that you do an incredible disservice if you attempt to make that policy for a variety of reasons, the effects of which can be catastrophic. Right. Um, the amount of harm that you can cause is terrible. Um, now, if you want to convince people to personally not abort their children, that's something that you could potentially go out and do. And in the same sense, that's how I feel with my sort of limited antinatalism, um, in that I feel like if you, for instance, live on the poverty line and are barely able to take care of yourself, mm -hmm. um, then it is probably not a good idea to bring somebody into this world that you're now going to also be responsible for. Right. Um, it's uh, generally not something, because as we all know, empirically speaking, if you're brought up in a an environment which is incredibly impoverished, um, even relatively speaking in America, where it's like better than the poverty in other places, it's still bad. It's still not good. And it can still lead to a lot of terrible uh, outcomes in your life. And it generally will uh, lead you towards, down, towards bad roads. Um, so... <clears throat> 
that's something that I think people should and ought to take into account when they're having children mm. um, or considering the question. Yeah, I mean, I think it's I think it's a, a, a practical conclusion to, you know, not have kids if you can't afford them. Um, but I do I do recognize that and I, I would hope you could also recognize that there is a classist element in that. Right. That um, functionally uh, you could create a a a policy of only uh, the upper classes, quote unquote, um, being able to reproduce, you know, if you have a society whose economy makes many, many people so poor that they can't have kids. So I can't help but wonder on that if the, you know, the sort of, uh, what's the right word, uh, a, 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 a policy or, a, or a, an approach that must also, you know, accompany this is the idea that um, in order to avoid just a deep inequity, we must also design uh, economic systems that don't force some people against their will to functionally to be trapped in, an, in a position where they cannot have kids. Well, this is why I'm saying that this shouldn't be something that is um, prescribed through any particular policy. Right. Um, there well, but do you are see a lot how of the opposite could be this. functionally? It, it it may not be explicitly stated that poor people can't have kids, but and even if you don't make a policy of of enforcing like antinatalism on anyone, that there that there may be uh it, it may unintentionally be enforced on the poor as it currently stands, right? Um, enforced? Uh, so long as you don't make a policy, I don't know how you would be able to enforce it. Well, I mean, if you have an economy that requires the mass impoverishment of many people in order to, you know, I mean, our Well, I'm also a socialist, no, I don't. Well, okay, fair enough, yeah. But I mean... <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't want either yeah, of those yeah. things. <laughs> That's fair, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I think that... Um, you're, you're right, of course, in the idea that this could potentially lead to some like uh, classist notions mm -hmm. of whether or not people are capable of having children. But I think that uh, there's you have to ask yourself a question. Mm -hmm. Are you uh, attempting to utilize some sort of utilitarian aspect of, of living that you think is the correct way of looking at things? Or are you trying like are you a, are you a utilitarian? Are you a deontologist? Like what what how, what, how, what is your approach to how you prescribe? Oh, my like approach? Um, yeah, I tend to be pretty util. Like, and I, I tend to be... Yeah, I, you know, I think your average person generally is fairly utilitarian. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the general, like, intuitive way in which people tend to view the world. Now, yeah. the problem is many antinatalists will uh, prey on this. I don't know if you're aware who David Benatar is, but yeah, he's kind I've of like... Of, um, heard, yeah, I was yeah, he's, doing he's sort of the modern, like, antinatalist spokesperson, so okay. to speak. Um uh, but he made what is known as the Benatarian asymmetry, uh, okay. which is that th it's basically four premises. One, the presence of pain is bad. Okay. Two, the presence of pleasure is good. Okay. Three, the absence of pain is good, even if that good is not enjoyed by anyone. And four, the absence of pleasure isn't bad unless there's someone for whom that absence is a deprivation. Okay. Now, this is a strictly just not not even get, going into rule utilitarianism or anything along those lines. It's just strictly utilitarian. Okay. Um, and now I can find some problems with this in the sense that I don't think there's any such meaning as good or bad when there is nobody to make that assessment. Um, these are meaningless terms without uh, being able to. Uh, experience them to any one particular degree. We don't know that pain is bad unless we experience it and then declare that this is something that we don't want. Sure. We don't know that pleasure is good unless we experience it and then declare that it is something that we do want. Um, which is why, in part, the uh, the conversation you had with uh, a couple a couple of people ago, uh, where we got into the logical conclusion of genetically altering babies to only feel pleasure even when they are uh, supposed to feel pain. Uh -huh. um, I think that that would be a very uh, not great way of things being. Well, I, I agree. I, I, I mean, I, I don't exactly think that we would be in a utopia, a chemical bliss. Like, I don't think the chemical bliss tree 
um to to quote stellaris would be uh would be the best future uh you know like what like basically having children that are that are custom designed to enjoy working in a mine and like just ca consistently orgasm while they're while they're slaving away in a deadly mine i don't think that's an ideal future i really don't um but uh but i do i do wonder if these definitions um <laughs> You know, if 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 these definitions aren't a little bit flawed by creating such dichotomies, also I don't know that pain can be summed up as a single concept, because I think that there is again, like I said with exercise, exercise is painful, but it is also rewarding, and it is also mm -hmm. can be pleasurable as well once a certain threshold is reached. I think perhaps there there is a necessitation for us to broaden the language before we can really make such declarations like right because so, i mean suffering um could be interpreted differently than just pain for example it may not be you know just pain alone a a a, a pain the pain of of you know uh, toughening up your fingers so you can play guitar is nothing in comparison to like i don't know being tortured for 10 years those are two completely different experiences right and so perhaps right. those things should be you know perhaps we have a limitation of language in how we're you know, and how some of these positions are being well, argued. Uh, actually, I know that uh, chat is not probably probably not going to be too terribly ecstatic about this particular uh, reference, but Hegel actually goes over a lot of this um, okay. in his works. Uh, he talks about first order and second order desires. Okay. Um, so a first order desire is something that you, in the immediate time, uh, either want or don't want to happen okay. to you for whatever reason that might be. And then a second order desire is something that in the long term and reasonably when you weigh it rationally, you either do or don't want to happen to you. As a, for instance, smoking cigarettes. In the immediate, if you're a cigarette smoker, you want to smoke a cigarette. However, mm -hmm. uh, rationally speaking, you also don't want cancer. Right. Um, now, so prioritizing the second order desires seems to make for a much more full and happy life as mm -hmm. opposed to first order ones. Um, and that's kind of like his one of his arguments, actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, is that uh, the prioritization of things in which we are rationally considering in a long-term sense is much more important than what we can achieve uh, in the moment mm -hmm. or what we want to do in the moment. So, for instance, with the guitar example that you brought up, mm -hmm. yes, immediately I might not want to hurt my fingers by practicing a guitar and callousing my fingers up. However, rationally speaking... I am a huge fan of music. I am extremely driven to learn how to play the guitar, and I would like to entertain both myself and other people, maybe my friends, things mm -hmm. along those lines. And that is uh, a good thing um, that we can rationally say we can we can go forward, and that it is worth the pain in which you have by screwing up your fingers for like a few weeks. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but um, I will say this: I think as much of a philosophy bro as I am. I do think that addressing antinatalism purely philosophically mm -hmm. isn't going to do much. Right. And the reason I say this is because antinatalism is a, it's a policy, it's well, not, not policy, it's a, it's a position in which has been held for, well, multiple centuries at this point. I think Schopenhauer was one of the first people who popularized the idea that existence is suffering. But okay. um, it's been, that's a, that's a concept that's been around since long before him. He was just one of the most famous people to like, kind of codify that in his works um and if a conversation is being had over the course of centuries and there's still reasonable people who have disagreements as to this conversation then i think it's worth uh, examining the idea that perhaps we're not having the correct conversation mm -hmm. um and that's why uh well i have actually i've actually have a lot of experience debating antinatalists uh, mm. people who universalize it i should say um and i find that there is a very large correlation mm -hmm. between people who are going through uh depressive points in their lives or people who are me. just like habitually depressive yeah. things along those lines mm -hmm. and believing in antinatalism um there was a guy i don't know if he's still around on youtube but uh he was kind of like a cult leader so to speak but not really all that intentionally um his name was in mendham uh and he was kind of like the premier antinatalist on youtube mm. for quite some time now he didn't have any sort of sophisticated arguments or anything along those lines he basically read benatar's book and then he that that's all he ever did okay <laughs> he didn't learn anything past the year 1990 ah. um 
And uh, <laughs> so he Oopsie. would go on YouTube and he would make videos like every single day, like hour, two hour, three hour long videos doing nothing but saying, you fucking fucking morons, you fucking don't understand the fucking life fucking sucks. Fuck. That's all he would do. <laughs> Just a, big... <laughs> a very angry person. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, I talked to some people because I was curious, why do you want to be recognized by this this dirty person who eats from the trash and gets on fucking a camera and tells everybody that they suck. Like this just seems like an incredibly unpleasant person. And they were, their response to me was fairly enlightening, which was if this is a person who hates everything and everyone, then if he likes me, then I'm doing something right. Um, and I find that this is a very big, uh, very big, um, sort of uh, psychology that you can find not just in cults, but also in conspiracy thinking mm. uh, and things like that. And I think that antinatalism attracts that a lot. This idea that you are going through something you can't readily understand. Mm -hmm. You come across somebody who you find to be charismatic for one reason or another, okay. who explains that thing for you. Mm -hmm. And then you feel you have this inside information that now you can lord over everybody else who just doesn't fucking get it, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, and, and that's kind of the way the antinatalism majoritively, at least online, presents itself. Mm. Uh, which is why I don't think that like, rational argumentation so to speak is the real way to address this um especially since it's a purely philosophical concept of morality so do you think do you think that my approach of saying of of coming up with hypotheticals like the the pleasure minds um is is an effective way of combating this perhaps, no most perhaps of the people... bringing some happiness into the lives of the people who would, who are so depressed that they advocate for anti hardcore antinatalism all the time uh, no, I, I don't think so. Mostly because, in my experience, people who do believe in like the hardcore levels of antinatalism generally are people who are so obsessed with this as a part of their identity. God damn you know it! I, I was mean? hoping you'd tell me I was right on the money. Uh, and well, the thing is, is that like when you are hedging your identity and your psychology into an ideology, yeah. it's extremely difficult to consider the notion that there's a hypothetical that's going to like turn you around right. mentally speaking. It's right. not something that you've reasoned yourself into, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's not really something that you can reason somebody out of. You can like, you can start pushing the right buttons mm -hmm. if you're able to read them well enough, yeah. uh, psychologically yeah. speaking, you can uh, like go up. I think the best approach for somebody who is like virulently antinatalist, mm -hmm. um, provided that they're not like some like scammer on the internet who's just trying to prey on like teenagers who are having a rough time in life, um, provided they're like a genuine antinatalist, the best way to approach them, I think, is to less talk about antinatalism and more talk about them. Like, hey, mm -hmm. how are you doing? What's going on in your life? Let's get, talk to me. Do you have do you have a lot of people that you talk to? Do you have a lot of like friends that you can be open with and and be honest with and and think and people who can like encourage you and things along those lines? Because well, and, and this isn't a, this isn't a cure all. Obviously, right, there's right. some people who uh, will be entrenched in this regardless of whether or not they have a, a, a support structure that's just waiting for them to come for them or trying to get in. Sometimes they just have the walls up just so thick that it's not really something that you can do. Um, <clears throat> So in those instances, there's not much you can do. But if it's somebody who's willing to be talked to, then approaching them on a more emotional level is going to be a lot more effective than approaching them with arguments or hypotheticals or talking about the, the history of the philosophy or anything along those You're lines. more or less so describing my approach, my advice that I give to people who ask about, like, what do I do about my QAnon uncle? Which is, there's not a whole lot you can do besides just try to be there for them and, and, and you know talk to them on an emotional level connect with them on an emotional level so they're not as reliant on the um whatever ideology they've chosen it's the same thing goes for religious folks as well i mean that's something that i had to experience as well was you know people being willing to talk with me and and um i mean it's more complicated than that but i mean a lot of times that there's no there's no video you can send somebody who's that deep into something that that's going to break them out of it there's no single argument that's going to be the magic bullet 
it has to be Absolutely. a process. And I, I, to be fair, I'm not I'm not some sort of psychology expert. It's not what I went to school for. Right. I went to yeah. school for philosophy, which only qualifies me to do call-ins on streams. Uh, it's the only thing I'm qualified to do. Um, but uh, I, I think that there's, <laughs> there's definitely a lot of people, I think, that are like in, of, of, of older generations that get a lot of their information from things like Facebook memes yeah. and uh, things like that. Uh, because, and I think part of it, I, I, I hesitate to talk about this because it's not something I've particularly researched. It's just something that's intuitive to me. Mm. I think part of it is that they don't have regular contact with, um, you know, their, 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 their grandkids or their kids or even just people around them that are, or like, they have uh, very disordered relationships and, with yeah. the people around they them. They don't, they don't have those sort of healthy relationships that keeps them from being like yeah. super online, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, being more friendly and being more there for your family members that are like, I don't know, convinced into something culty or something yeah. that is just completely irrational without hurting yourself, by the way, than... without hurting yourself, mm -hmm. you gotta, you gotta, it's, it's the, it's the reach or throw, don't go kind of swimming rules. Like you can't, right, you can't right. drown don't, yourself don't, for a toxic don't go out of your way. Don't yeah. like, hurt, don't like hurt yourself trying to provide the emotional labor for somebody else. If, uh, it, like if you think that it's worth it, then proceed with caution. You know, if it's your family member, then I can understand you taking on a little bit more emotional labor than you might be used to for maybe one of your like <clears throat> acquaintances. I can yeah. get that. It's, yeah. There's 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 a scale to these sorts of things. Um, in the same sense, if it's somebody that you don't know at all who's just harassing you about like their cult beliefs, you are not obligated to try and help them out of the problem that they've gotten themselves into either. Um, those sorts of things are just. Uh, it's nice to do so, um, but you are incurring harm onto yourself and for potentially very little. Yeah, uh, and that's something that you have to understand before you start going into those sorts of things. I agree. I would um, agree with you on that. Um, well, uh, thank you very, very much for coming on, Big Lundy. I, I feel like mm -hmm. your position was super uh, interesting on this, and I appreciate you being willing to discuss this all with me. Um, was there anything else you wanted to hit me with before we bring somebody else in? Um, I, I think those are the main things. I'll just go ahead and, I guess, shout myself out a little Please bit do. here. Yeah. Uh, I, so I am Big Lundy. I, you can find me on uh, Twitch as well as on Twitter and such. Uh, I normally don't do a whole lot of leftism on my Twitch. I'm uh, I'm a D and d boy. Um, <laughs> so if you're good. interested in those sorts of things, then feel free to drop by those. Um, but yeah, that's uh, if you're interested in my more leftist takes, then you'll gen you'll just you'll very much see that on my Twitter <laughs> for sure. I'm almost always on there. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you, guys. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, and I'll talk to you hopefully soon. Have a good evening. Bye for now. Hello, hello, hello. It looks like Lady Kelgana. Lady Kelgana. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Um, pronouns real quick? She, her. All righty. Lady Kelgana, hit me with your with your antinatalist, antinatalist nuclear takes. So I guess my my uh, position on it is... Okay. I'm sorry. I'm really nervous. Don't worry. <laughs> don't be nervous. You're only in um, front of 2.500 right. two, two point, two point people. I just feel like in like right. I think similar to how the other guy was 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 uh, putting out. I think the the current state of the world mm -hmm. is so bad that like and just life in general right now is is just so bad. Except for like a few people that you know having you know having a child is a little bit cruel and unusual. Yeah. Okay. Um. So like, I feel like um. As somebody who does not necessarily, uh, I, don't, I don't believe life or death is, you know, a a particularly. I don't think either one is 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 a is a you know superior state. Um, so maybe like, and I, and I also believe in the spirit. So I think that you know, there's there's something to be looking forward to after this. Um, but I think that you know that, that it's just like you don't bring some don't so you can subject people to life right i right. think that you know life can be so hard and so cruel and like why would you want to bring somebody into that you know well i mean if you i i don't know about your theological perspective but my my question would be i'm pagan well okay so uh i don't know necessarily all the details there but if there's if there is a spirit 
um, even if the world is suffering, would not giving them the opportunity to eventually reach the afterlife via living life, would that not be in and of itself valuable? Um, yes, even if life is I bad. guess. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'm not a very good debater. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's fine. I just think I think it's something worth considering, right? I mean, I do think yeah. it's a different framework that I'm used to approaching. But, um, you know, my perspective you know, if I dip, if I put my Christian hat back on for a second, um, and I go, well, if, you know, barring like the Evangelion situation where we start talking about like, well, is there a limited number of souls that are like sort of doled out to bodies or is a soul created for the person, you know, is that a completely unique soul that is brought into existence? Um, if it is the second one, then I would assume that it would be good uh, to even if the world is the most suffering thing you can imagine, the fact that that is not that is nothing compared to an eternity of salvation and togetherness with God. So in that case, you would have the Catholic situation where they would have as many kids as possible, regardless of whether you can afford them or not, because you're basically giving a being a ticket, even if they have to suffer through a short, a comparatively short life, they're getting an eternity of of holiness now if the, if it's the other position where there is a limited number there is like a, a limited number or a cycling number of souls a la evangelion where there's like a a number of souls that are distributed to a planet or whatever then then i think it would take on a different angle but it would probably depend you know from a spiritual perspective at least i would imagine that the, the position would change depending on whether which of those two models you believe is the case i think that also you're putting a a a preferential treatment on existence like i don't know if, if if actually ever existing is necessarily preferable to life or you know death i don't know if if, if existence really is you know the the preferred but we do know that life is pain right like life sucks so like i don't know i feel like i mean and I'm, i would never say like hey um you shouldn't have kids like that that's right. not going to tell somebody that i think i do think that people should um, be more mindful of it. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think you should just have kids willy nilly. Like a lot of people do. I think we should be right. focusing more on educating people on like what it means to be a parent and like, yeah. is this really for you or is this something you're just doing on a whim? Yeah, I mean, I I don't know. Um, I think, uh, I think it's very. I think it's hard. It is ultimately an arbitrary decision whether you think that life is is suffering or if it's not. Um, I think there are uh, aspects of life that are incredibly painful and difficult to deal with, but there are other, uh, in many ways, life is the uh, life is the substance that is required for all other things. That's true. As far as I can tell, mm -hmm. like you cannot experience uh, happiness or you cannot experience knowledge or wonder or awe without necessarily you know stepping into the medium that is life and i think that's a very tough question for me yeah. my conclusion is more or less that i don't really care um whether life is suffering or not i don't really know if it can be defined as such but i do know that life is the gateway to all other things as far as i can tell unless i find out after i die that i've been playing a video game this whole time like um you know then that would be a very interesting turn of events but um barring that all the only thing the only way that i can even experience anything whether i can know whether i can like the only way i can even ponder whether life is worth living is if i live so it's right. a it's a simple you know That's, i'm alive yeah, i have no choice in that matter and i don't think therefore i am yeah and so uh in that case like uh i don't know i think it's a i think it's a hard call um you know, being... I think that. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go no, ahead. Please go ahead. Uh, I say I think that I think it also comes down to your your life experiences. Like, you know, I'm 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 have I saw also suffer from chronic depression. I know you were talking about earlier. I also oh, have I've had points like many points in my life where I where I felt suicidal. I had one just recently, in fact. Likewise. Um, but you know, I think you know I'm also a trans girl in Texas, so that's going to color my my worldview a little bit too. So yeah. Um. I I, just, I I think it, I think that also you have to look at you know somebody else is talking about like you know hey it's all pleasure and pain you know if you, you want to maximize pleasure and minimize pain but you know pain is is a is a is a scale that can only be measured by you know your worst day on earth so Debbie in you know the Hamptons you know 
worst day ever is going to be a lot different than you know the kid who's living day to day you know in the streets trying to survive right right there, there's, but there's gonna also be a different it's very difficult there. to determine a a um a uh objective standard of any type for what suffering is i mean who who's to say that debbie's worst day on the planet isn't actually worse than somebody else's even though by all intents and purposes by our sort of economic uh you know assumptions and whatever we might be like oh that's nothing but what if the amount of suffering on the day that you know her cake doesn't her 16th birthday cake with an explosive million dollar i don't know whatever fucking imagine thing i don't even know what what do rich people even do these days uh with a yacht in it isn't like her not getting that it's like the most disappointing i didn't thing. get my my third yacht because yeah, i didn't, didn't get, get my third. corporate bonus. yeah what if that's the most what if that is like in her own mind it is it's like existential torture worse than anything anybody else could imagine like see that that's where this stuff gets really speculative for me um yeah and also like i mean again uh uh, uh you know myself uh i've dealt with depression for my whole life and right um but 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 it's really hard but there is something that like i think that um it is it is really hard to like and i don't even think it's fair to really make calls based on like what life is if you've if you have yet to only experience like depression version of life or at least mostly experience that i mean it's taken me a long ass time to get more control over my depression and i don't think it'll ever be gone completely but it's like like i, I don't think any moral is is universal like well, yeah i, I, think, I just mean I that like, everybody's beliefs are going to i think i think like having a moral opinion is always going to be an opinion right like so i i personally believe that you know having a child might be wrong but i'm not going to enforce i'm not going to push that on anybody else that's right. just kind of my my personal whole beliefs because of my my life and the way i've 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 been brought up in the way I've, I've lived. You know, it's not something I would wish on somebody else. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that like when I was at my worst moments, I would have, it was, it was almost impossible for me to see the world in any other way. And it took, it, it took a, like some support from people who weren't in that state, but also it took me resolving myself to at least try to get out of that state to see if there was something alternative to that because i think there it is possible i know firsthand again it's possible to get to a point of depression where you've lost like almost Mm -hmm. all hope in the world um i you you were correct when you said earlier that depression was you know it's not wanting to die it's it's being in a hole so deep and dark you don't know how to get out and you feel like you're back in the corner and you just you say oh well it's this or die and this death is preferable to what i'm experiencing Uh, and and it can it can that can be the conclusion but the the but often like it's just it is a sort of uh mental shorthand because everything else is very complicated when i was at my worst moment i felt like i couldn't see any beauty in the world that everything that i hated Mm -hmm. everything and i I hated the filth of the world and 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 like it just felt like a terrible place and and it took me um really challenging myself to look deep to look further and see if it wasn't actually if i really did actually hate everything so much and it also took me like getting to a point where i just said like okay so what so if i if i can't find beauty in the world then what i'm just gonna give up or something and make myself more miserable like it's always finding hope it's that way out is finding hope for sure yeah i mean hope is a huge part of 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 things but but like hope isn't like an entirely rational process because like Mm -hmm. uh, not but neither is depression neither is hopelessness neither of those things are like rational processes necessarily they have they might be affected by other rational processes but um and and yeah i i think uh i think i always encourage people from someone who's experienced it myself extensively for years and years and years to, um, to really, really honestly and, and, uh, and, um, rationally ask oneself if perhaps there, there is like something that might be obscuring your ability to analyze whether the world is, is worth living in, or if you really, really want like oblivion as a solution, because, um, I think a lot of times, uh, it is 
like a cloud of of emotions that can that can block your ability to see other things that you actually would like and that was certainly the case for me um and, it, you, and i'm not always depressed like i i, right. I have periods where i'm like hey Most you know the yeah. world's world's you know i can i can enjoy things right but right. you know depression is is just like the lack of enjoyment but yeah um i think i think even even enjoying things yeah, at least for at least for the for the for proletariat like it's it's just i just don't see how it's like if I had to choose right now, hey, would I do? Would I want to do this all over again? I don't. I don't know if I could say yes. You know, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard question. No, like I, mean, I don't the know. The only if reason wanted, you can even ask it. that question is because you've done it once, right? True. Mm -hmm. um, I think that. Uh, I I think that um, there is uh, people. I don't know. I I I. I I can sympathize with like the conditions of life making you feel that like it's it's terrible and it's not worth doing or whatever. But at the same time, it's like, well, until you're dead, you really haven't tried everything. And you really don't know what kind of cracks you can find in the world until you've really tried. And like and and, and I mean really tried. Like for me, the thought experiment that did it was um okay so i mean i was miserable like like at the, at this point it was like i was recovering from a surgery and there was all kinds of shit that was going on and i was like okay so what happens if the worst thing happens um what happens if i end up in like some like abu Ghraib solitary confinement prison cell that's just horribly torturous and terrible um what like what 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 happens then and the first thing that came to my mind was like, well, if I'm not dead, then I could scratch a story into the wall if I wanted to. And I was mm -hmm. like, why did that come to my mind? And it was like this exper this thought experiment of imagining the worst situation I could imagine myself in and trying to see, well, is there anything I could do to alleviate that situation or make that a situation um, better? And when I was in that, when I was in that thing, when I was in that position, I was like, well, wait a second. If I can think even in the worst position I could possibly imagine, um, that I could do I something. That What's that? I said, I identify with that a lot. I, yeah. you know, I, when you're, when you're suicidal, like the, one of the best strategies I found is to, is to think, okay, what's, what's the worst case scenario and how would I, well, let's make a strategy for that and having a strategy for that worst case scenario helps you get through it yeah but i mean it can also put things into perspective like it, it opened my mind to like okay if i put myself in a position where there's basically nothing i can do uh nothing else i could do except for like i don't know sit in a concrete box and and like and like i don't know paint a painting on the wall but i could find a way to do something to make it better and i'm like well then certainly certainly there's something that i haven't located yet there's exactly. so, there's obviously in my circumstance something and as it turns out there was there was a number of things and it did take some patience it took a lot of work uh a lot of fucking basically life sort of life gambling of just going like oh well i guess i'm gonna try this thing and but that ended up being rewarding and it ended up ma helping me make a lot of progress against depression in the long run and yeah. also if i hadn't done that this was long i had this sort of situation with myself long before i even started streaming mm -hmm. i didn't even know that streaming was going to be in my future so it wasn't like this was something i did recently this was like i didn't even how i didn't even think that streaming was ever going to be possible for me until after i'd made the decision to be like nope i'm going to figure out a way to fix this shit or i'm going to die trying and, so yeah i'm yeah i'm 34 i'll be 35 mm -hmm. in june um and i've been tr i've been out as trans mm -hmm. for about eight months um so, and before that I, I was absolutely just didn't give a shit if i lived or died yeah. like i was I, you know it was very repressed for me it was something that that i didn't i didn't realize until i just like one of those moments where it's like oh shit mm -hmm. i'm fucking trans holy fuck right um but like before that like i was actually angry at my mom for like why did you why did you do this to me why did you bring me into this world this was why did why would you why would you subject me to this yeah um so i, I mean i'm just I see where you're coming from, and, I, and, and you know, and it's always good to look for you know the best in a bad situation. But I also feel like just I don't know. I I just don't see how 
I just think it's it's you know gosh I don't want I don't want other kids to go through what I went through I guess yeah you know? um, well I mean I think that's one thing but perhaps uh perhaps I mean right now at least seems to me that like um you know the kids thing is not necessarily on your plate at the moment so perhaps right, no, for sure. <laughs> there are I can't have kids anymore like yeah. I, I didn't I didn't save well, my sperm I was like no we're not doing that uh, so listen, there's where there's a will there's a way um but uh but uh all I'm saying is that that um you know at the end of the day uh i always encourage people to look for the cracks in the seemingly uncrackable walls of life because uh sense. i do think that like our weird like will to survive is like one of the things of being human that we can exploit and i do believe that taking a a sort of watchful and active approach increases our likelihood of overcoming the hard things that are causing us pain in our lives and you can't always overcome them entirely there are some things you might not be able to overcome but the only guarantee the the, the genuine only guarantee uh that you will not succeed or that you will not find a happier future is to give up that is the only way right. that is the only right. surefire way because if, I, there was if a point I, died, I would i would never been i never would have figured out i'm a woman so right you know like... right and the other side too was that i was like listen on a worst case scenario uh what what happens if there are there is something that i cannot comprehend that happens tomorrow and I, and perhaps this is like a faithy type thing it wasn't really faith for me it was just like well what happens if something i couldn't predict happens tomorrow and as it turns out, sometimes that does happen. I mean, uh, I could never have predicted at that moment that, like, I would be here now, ever. Like, yeah. in, in multiple ways. There's, like, 20 different I, ways in which that was the I case. I thought that a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, I am going to eat some food, and we're going to talk about Milo Yiannopoulos. But uh, it was really great talking with you, and I appreciate um, you sharing your limited antinatalist position because I actually am, am glad that I ended up having serious conversations and not memes about uh, d deleting all babies or, or whatever. Um, thank you so much. <laughs> so thank you so much for, for coming on, and uh, do me a favor, huh? Don't fucking mm -hmm. give up. Yeah? Nope, I'm Don't not fucking doing I'm not, it. Not not doing it. We're not gonna. We're gonna keep going. Good shit. That's, that what I, that's what I want to fucking hear. I don't do this sort of shit very frequently, but I I will utilize. This is call me call me fucking dark 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 side mama utilizing <laughs> um utilizing parasocial pressure to tell my followers to fucking take care of themselves and fight harder. But I'm but, gonna do it. Yeah, I'm unethical. Send me to hell. I already braved it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, bye-bye. Have All a good right. one. Bye for now, Lady Kelgana. Thank you for coming on. Of course. Bye for now. That's right. That's right. Fuck you. I don't give a shit about your dumb rules.